hello everyone. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, so it was about three years ago that I started working on the Ionic community plugins. Um, and honestly, at that time, I had no idea what this you know, community and Narwhal and everything, how much of an impact it would have on me. So I'm very stoked to be up here to talk about uh, building cross-platform mobile apps using uh, Ionic. OK. So let's say you've got an existing team of web developers. Um, you've got an Angular app that already exists, and you have a need for it to be ported to mobile. You've also got a Greenfield mobile app that's coming down the pipeline, and your team has been considering using React for it, maybe not. And you guys are also heavy users of NX, so you're totally bought into building in mono repos, sharing your code, and that whole entire ecosystem. So these days, there are a ton of ways to build mobile apps. Um, you can go full native, uh, but you're not going to be able to leverage much of your team's existing web skills uh, and tooling and all that. And you're going to have to make the app for both platforms, of course. Or you could choose one of the many hybrid app frameworks out there, but there are a variety of different trade-offs with each, each one of these. And then once you've decided on a framework or set of tools for building your app, you've got to figure out how to build those apps and get it published to the App Store in some kind of automated fashion. So CICD for web development has matured a lot over the past few years. I think we've all been really spoiled by services like Vercel and Netlify that make it extremely easy to take a brand new application and go straight to production. That being said, doing this for mobile apps is an entirely different beast. Um, and then when you talk about these different hybrid app frameworks out there, they all have their own quirks, dependencies, commands that need to be run. So that's just kind of the beginning of the struggle. I'm also sure some of you have heard about some mythical Mac Mini sitting in a closet somewhere that's dedicated to only building iOS apps. And there's probably one person at the company at best who knows how this thing works, um, if they're still there. So I don't think anybody wants to have something like this in their, uh, in their pipeline or what you know, you're building the future of your company on. And this should come as no surprise, but I'm here to talk about how Ionic is a great solution to all these problems that we've talked about so far. So Ionic builds tools and services for developing cross-platform applications using web technologies. And we like to think of what we offer as the mobile SDK for the web. So to put it even more simply, Ionic allows you to develop uh, mobile applications that, or web applications, I should say, that look like a traditional app, run like a traditional app, feel like an app, uh, and we can help you build your app and ship it straight to the App Store. And then, like I mentioned earlier, uh, we have some NX plugins to help you get started. So with uh, just a couple of commands to get things going, uh, you can go ahead and generate an application uh, just as easy as you can with uh, Angular or React or any of the other first-class plugins that NX ships. So there are a few products that I'm going to be talking about today and how they're all an integral part of solving these issues. Um, we've got the Ionic Framework Component Library, Capacitor, and what I personally work on, uh, AppFlow. But before we get into each of those, let's go back to the scenario from before. So we've got this Angular app, and really, we just want to get it onto mobile devices in an actual native uh, app package. We realize there's probably going to be some rough edges, but this app already has really good responsive design. It works well on a mobile web browser, so we think that just getting it into an actual application bundle is going to be a great start. So this is where Capacitor comes in. Uh, Capacitor is a native runtime for web applications. Essentially, it takes your static web assets and bundles them into an iOS or Android app. You really don't need any prior knowledge of Kotlin or Swift to get started, um, but Capacitor does app give you access to the full native source code of each application for iOS and Android, respectively. So if there's any need for your team to get in and access the actual native source code, whether it's uh, adding some kind of a feature, updating dependencies, or maybe making an Apple Watch app, uh, your team has the full capabilities to do so. So with just a few commands, we can go ahead and add the capacitor plugin, similar to an Ionic React or Ionic Angular plugin. Uh, we can run the capacitor project generator to configure your existing application uh, with, capa or, yeah, with capacitor. 
And then we have a couple simple uh, executor commands to add Android and iOS, um, and then to be able to uh, run those applications respectively. So it's really easy to get started. You can take most applications that are single page apps um, and get them running onto a mobile device uh, within minutes. And then if you need access to any of the native device APIs through JavaScript and TypeScript, uh, Capacitor can help you do this as well through its plugin system. So um, here we have a local notification plugin where we're scheduling it for a time. We've added some extra metadata to it. Um, and this is going to work on iOS and Android. And we'll even fall back to the web uh, without writing any kind of special logic for any of the platforms. So you can kind of see at the top there, we've also got a, a geolocation plugin and a camera plugin. Um, and so Capacitor ships a lot of plugins out of the box to uh, help uh, allow you to do pretty much anything you, know, you would expect with a uh, mobile application. And then there's also a thriving developer community out there making plugins. So uh, there's a very good chance that you're going to be able to uh, install a plugin for something that you need that touches any of the actual native code without having to worry about writing any of that native code yourself. That being said, if you do find yourself in a situation where your team needs access to a native API, maybe it's very new, it just came out, and there's no capacitor plugins for it. If you have someone that is willing to get into the native code, maybe has some experience, you can write your own plugins through the SDK. So now, maybe you want a slightly different experience on mobile. There's a lot of components like you see here that uh, are very mobile-centric things that you would expect a mobile device to have, like action sheets, alert dialogues, and date-time pickers that are styled for your actual um, uh, platform's design guidelines. And so maybe you could actually take uh, NX and create a second application specifically for your mobile app, move all of your common logic, components, anything that is willing to be shared into separate libraries, and then your two apps can just consume those with as little custom logic in each of those uh, as possible. So let's move on to our Greenfield application. For this, we're considering React, and maybe we don't have as much code to share, if any at all, and it's going to be mobile only. Uh, remember these components from just a minute ago. So these are actually all Ionic component library components. So these are built with web components and are designed to look like the iOS design guidelines when running on an iOS device and will change respectively when they're running on an Android device. So we build these with web components so that we can ship Ionic to Vue, React, Angular, and really any framework that is able to consume web components. Uh, they can all start using Ionic components uh, right out of the box. So it gives us the ability to develop these components one time, fix bugs one time, and ship to all these different platforms. So Ionic ships pretty much all the components that you would need to build your app. We have sliders, alert dialogues, uh, list views, uh, toggles and all kinds of stuff, and they are all specifically styled for material design and the iOS design guidelines. So if you're running on an iOS app, it will look and feel at home in the iOS ecosystem, and the same thing can be said for Android. And whenever you're running on the web, it just defaults to material design, though all of this is customizable, so you can force it to go either style if you want. Um, perhaps you really like material design and you want to have your entire application styled like that, you can do it very, very easily with just a little bit of a configuration change. Now, there is kind of a common theme between Capacitor and Ionic here, and it's that we don't want you to have to think about the platforms that you're building for. So there's no custom views for iOS versus Android. There's no custom logic to activate the uh, native device APIs. Uh, we allow you to build the same application for web, iOS, and Android the same exact way, using the same technology and skills, uh, and it just works for all those different platforms. Now, let's go back to that Mac Mini in the closet. So compared to what we are used to with modern web development, this is clearly a nightmare. Nobody wants that. But thankfully, there is a much better way. Introducing what I work on, the exciting stuff. Uh, AppFlow is a CI CD for building and deploying Ionic apps, capacitor apps, and as of recently, React Native apps. So we allow developers to uh, configure their builds, uh, deployments, uh, 
so that you know, if you're merging to a branch or if you want to introduce uh, this into your existing CI CD pipeline, uh, you have flexible options and we have a CLI available to help you do that. We also have a pretty neat feature called Live Updates that enables you to push out updates to your apps over the air to skip the App Store approval process. Essentially, if you're not making any changes to the native layer of your code, this includes adding new plugins, for instance. Um, if you're just adding new features to your web application, then you can ship these updates out through various different channels that are hard-coded into your application when you deploy them. So whether you manage them through different versions or if you're managing them through a dev channel and a staging channel and a QA channel, you can actually push out these updates automatically to your users uh, instantly. Uh, so as soon as they open the app for the next time, your updates will start opening in the background, and the next time they refresh the app, they will have this latest update. This has a lot of different use cases. We see this uh, used for different things like white label apps or just quick critical bug fixes, but overall this is probably one of our most powerful features and one of the things that keep people coming back to AppFlow. This is something that is configured with a capacitor plugin currently for uh, capacitor applications, but we are working on React Native support and to be able to enable this kind of thing for more scenarios going forward as we continue to add platforms and uh, expand what capabilities, Ionic products uh, and AppFlow and whatnot, what different frameworks and te uh, technologies that we support. Okay, so. Now I have a little bit of a demo that I'm gonna show off here. Hopefully it goes well. Um, I'm gonna, today I'm gonna be showing how to generate a brand new Ionic application in an existing workspace uh, and how easy it is to get your application hooked up to AppFlow for automated builds on branch merges and also how to set this up with GitHub Actions so that if you've already got an existing pipeline and you're just throwing this new app into your workspace, uh, we can kick that all off and offload only the builds to AppFlow. So here we have an NX workspace, and for the sake of time for the demo, I've already installed the React capacitor and an Ionic React plugins. So we've got the standard NARAL one, which the other ones depend on, um, and then here we can open up NX console, and if we use the generate function, we have an Ionic React uh, target here, and we've got a lot of the same options that you're gonna expect in a normal application that you're gonna generate, but in particular, we're gonna go down here to the template. So if you're used to building Ionic apps, you'll know that there is a number of templates that you can generate your app to kind of have a good starting point. So here we're gonna be picking the side menu template, and then we can go up and actually continue to generate our application. And then in just a few moments here, we will have our app generated. So this works very similar to uh, any other standard application generator. And now we have an iOS app. So this is leveraging uh, all of the React uh, plugins, executors, and whatnot that uh, ship with uh, the Narwhal React plugin. So we're able to like offload a lot of that work and focus on creating a nice experience for Ionic. Now some of the executors that we add for you include adding iOS uh, and Android platforms to your project. So it's very easy to add an iOS app and you'll see that we actually have a folder here that you're supposed to check into your code that contains the entire source code for that application. Uh, so if you wanna get into the Swift code, uh, if you really want to, then you can totally do that. And with another executor, we can go ahead and open this iOS app, and you'll see that it actually opens in Xcode. So we can actually edit all of the configurations and kind of develop our app from here as if it was an iOS app, knowing that our web bundle has been injected. So our interface is gonna be all in web, um, and from here we can really just focus on building our application because that's what most scenarios are gonna be uh, requiring. And now we have an iOS app uh, running in an Xcode simulator, and all this is built with web technology. So nowhere have we gone outside the bounds of you know, the DOM or anything like that. We're bringing all those skills and tools to native. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and actually reset this workspace a little bit, and uh, then we're gonna go into um, 
actually demonstrating, deploying, or doing a build automated from uh, a branch push. So if you're fully bought into the app flow dashboard, maybe you really is, might be the only CI CD that you need. You can hook up your repo, uh, label your branch with an automation, and then as soon as any code changes are pushed to that branch, you can fire off a build depending on how you've configured your automation. So for this use case, I'm just doing a simple readme update just to be able to kick off the CI CD. There we go. And here we can see that I've got an automation set up in AppFlow for this demo. So it's called build iOS. It's on the branch demo, and it's going to build an iOS app. And we can see here that it's already kicked off. Now, this is going to take a little bit, so I'm not going to sit here and uh, bore you guys with the entire build log. But we can move on to the next example, which would be if you already have an existing CI CD pipeline, or maybe AppFlow is just not your preference, uh, you can move uh, this kind of stuff into something like GitHub Actions. So here I've got a GitHub Actions workflow. It's very simple. It's tied to a branch called dev, so I'm not mixing up my branches here for the demo. And also we are installing the Ionic Cloud CLI and then just kicking off a web build while passing in um, the app ID. You also have to pass in the commit, of course, and we're grabbing that from GitHub itself. But with this, we're able to automate iOS builds, or I think this is actually web builds, and from our GitHub Actions, which is pretty cool. So I'm going to just do something very similar here. I'm going to update my readme, get a file change, I'm going to go ahead and stage that. And then once this gets pushed up, we'll be able to see it uh, kick off in GitHub Actions. Now here we can see, back in the AppFlow dashboard, our iOS app has already begun part of the building. We're doing a dependency install, so this is for the actual web portion of our app. And once that's done, it will build the app uh, and then start compiling it into an iOS app using Capacitor. And over here in GitHub Actions, we can see that it's all been picked up and we're starting to kick off a web build. So that will take just a moment for that to start uh, showing some build outputs as well. But here in a moment, we will see that that is also um, outputting some app flow build output. And so here we can see that this is pretty much the same output that app flow displays in our little build log. So you get the full experience, whether you're using app flow or integrating this into your own CI CD. Um, it should look really nice. And if there's any errors in the builds or any problems, you'll have all the information and the errors output in this, uh, the same as you would with our CI CD system. Let's see. I think that is pretty much it. So, um, yeah, Ionic is a company that really focuses on building web products or web tools and services for developing cross-platform apps, really using, utilizing web technology as much as we can. Uh, we like to lean into that in terms of the um, developer experience, um, and we also think that web components are a really great way to help enable this and continue uh, pushing this kind of thing forward and making it very maintainable for us to kind of be around for the long term. Um, and I think you all have seen here today that this works really well with an NX workspace. Because we're just building web apps, we're you know, fitting right into what we already have, the experiences, the tools that we know, and we can just add that extra little layer on top to be able to port it to a uh, native application whenever we need to. So that being said, I think that's pretty much it. So uh, thank you all for listening, and I hope you all go check out Ionic and maybe build some mobile applications. <laughs>